the power dome. Danger high voltage. So another control panel. Whatever inhabitants were man managed to survive, this facility will kick into gear and provide power. This is the Titan Intercontinental Ballistic Missile. Its mission, deliver a payload to a designated spot on the Earth's surface some 5,500 nautical miles away. Its warhead could level an entire city. The lethal giant is boosted on its way by raw power. So 23, welcome back to Nuclear Bunker Living. Now, on April 18th, 1962, the SAC, the Strategic Air Command, declared the 724th Strategic Missile Squadron operational. And two days later, the Nuclear Bunker Living Titan I was activated and went on alert status. This Titan I complex with its ICBM arsenal armed with its 4.5 megaton warheads, cast an ominous cloud over the Soviets in the early 1960s during the Cuban Missile Crisis. These military propaganda photos were circulated globally to act as a deterrence. And with propaganda, it's a powerful weapon of war. Uh, it was used to uh, dehumanize and create hatred towards a supposed enemy. Over 600,000 cubic yards of earth was removed in the facility's construction. 32,000 cubic yards of epoxy polymer modified concrete rated at up to 15,000 psi, 300 tons of piping, 90 miles of cables, 3,000 tons of 3-inch rebar, and a labyrinth of over 2,500 feet of expansive tunnels. That's the Titan One. This Titan I nuclear bunker complex cost the American taxpayers a total of $47 million, and that's in 1962 dollars to build, that is. Indexed to inflation, the replacement value of a Titan I nuclear bunker complex today would be over $350 million. An operational view of the powerhouse taken from the mezzanine level. And the diesel generators obviously dominated the power dome when the Titan One was active. And these generators were manufactured by Worthington and each could produce 1,000 kilowatt of 2,400 volts three-phase power at 60 hertz. These are the water chillers that regulated the optimal temperature for the generators. And here you can see the exhaust piping that extracted the dirty turbine air through the exhaust outtake building. On June 25th, 1965, the 724th Strategic Missile Squadron was deactivated. In this iconic photo, my actual Titan One crew are photographed walking at the gates of the complex for the historic final time.
the power dome. We are in the famous power dome. 130 feet across, 55 feet high. This is a monster. Look at this. We'll go in there in a sec. Let's go left. Ha! Little baby carriage there. Switch your controls here. What is that? Danger, high voltage. Well, thank you for the. Uh... Power on, boiler operating. So this must be the other boiler room. Neatly tucked away in here. Well, what's called a shop? The maintenance equipment. How official. So another control panel. Looking well, somewhat wobbly there. <laughs> Look at that. That's an original chair. Hello. <laughs> this room was a power dome, the power generator. Had four massive generator turbines. The amount of electricity created in here. The surrounding city back in the day. The surrounding city back in the day Population was about 400,000 in the early 1960s. This also was the default power station for the neighboring city. In the event of a nuclear strike, whatever inhabitants were man managed to survive, this facility will kick into gear and provide power for those remaining inhabitants of the neighboring city. Population back then was 400,000. But the power generators are over here. Massive, massive turbines. But you've got to think about it, how incredibly noisy. So, how to operate over here is his control panel, his seat. I imagine his ears would have been shot. Look at this. So it's the boiler room over here, the water treatment plant. These all switches here. Effluent, backwash, backwash outlet, inlet, effluent valve. Water treatment plant, manufactured by LA Water Conditioning, Glendale, California. Well, LA Water Conditioning Incorporated, thank you for your contribution. August 1960, this was installed. Glendale, California. Big, massive tanks here. And on the right-hand side, Idea the sodium hydroxide solution tank. A 
Once again, every tank was catalogued. Every part. How's that for bureaucracy? Every part catalog and coded to prevent theft, perhaps. Got some magnesium block here. I can see why. Well, the conduit runs all the way across here. Okay, I think I know what you guys are. These are sound baffles over here. What you also noticed when I first walked in. Up there we've got sound baffles here too. It's kind of cool. FOS, FO, FOD. Gotta watch where I'm walking here. Yeah. yeah. So turbines would run all the way across here. On the springs here, its own crib, its own suspension here. As you can see with the power dome, much of the steel grating has been salvaged. That's the water wells. There's two wells. Where the water's pumped from. These wells, 1,800 feet into the aquifer. Massive springs on these generators. Deep trenches run around the generator pads to provide access for piping and exhaust to and from the generators. At the bottom of these trenches is some extremely nasty looking water. Massive tank. This coloured water in the trenches is a tasty blend of iron oxide, heavy metals produced by corroding metal, lubricants and cellulose fibres. A mag block as best I see. They will soon be abated. Look at that. It just dropped on these pipes. It's only dangerous if you disturb it. I am double masked. I am double masked right now. The sodium hydroxide solution tank. Let's go upstairs. Give you a whole different perspective up here now. Let's explore the air intake. Massive fans. Let's go to the exhaust building. More tanks. Are you sturdy enough? Look at that. 
Engineering Marvel. Why is that moving? 